The other type of molecular function is binding, and there are ways of monitoring non-covalent interactions too. The most popular methods are variations on ELISA, or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays. As an example, consider that we wish to engineer a protein that binds specifically to human serum albumin. Perhaps I designed a protein in silico and now wish to test whether it does what it is designed to do. In this case, it is an aphobody, which are short proteins derived from protein A that I have engineered to bind human serum albumin. First, I will overexpress a gene encoding the aphobody in E. coli, lyse the cells, and purify my protein. I will then perform ELISA to determine whether the protein binds to human albumin and not other albumin such as rat. I start with a maxisorb plate. ELISA plates are distinct from those used to culture cells. The polymer surface is sticky towards proteins. So when we add the human serum albumin or rat sample to the well, the protein becomes immobilized on the surface of the plate. We then block the surface with milk to coat any surfaces of the plate that did not pick up the albumin. We then add the purified aphobody, and if it binds to the albumin, it will become immobilized. Unreacted aphobody is washed away. We then add an antiprotein A IgG biotin conjugate. Aphobodies derived from protein A, such as ours, will react with this IgG antibody. The reagent will become immobilized on the surface of the plate. The biotin is chemically reacted with the antibody in the company that supplies it, so biotin is now also immobilized on the plate. We then add streptavidin HRP conjugate, which will bind to the biotin. Finally, we add hydrogen peroxide and a chemical substrate called ABTS. Upon reaction with HRP, a detectable product results. Thus, ultimately, we are monitoring HRP reactions, but the HRP will only be present in the well if all the other non-covalent reactions took place. There are many variations on ELISA assays. In all cases, you build up a sandwich of interactions that ultimately results in retention of a readily detected enzyme or a fluorophore. And then this is read out using appropriate photometric or fluorometric methods. There are other techniques. Gel shifts in native gels are one way of monitoring non-covalent interactions between proteins and DNAs. Here, you incubate the DNA with the protein and then run a gel. The band will migrate differently if it is bound to a protein, and this can be quantified from the intensity of the bands. Gel shifts also can monitor protein-protein interactions. Size exclusion chromatography is another option. The complex formed by two interacting biomolecules is larger than either component, and it will result in a new band in the column which can be quantified. Surface plasmon resonance involves immobilizing the biomolecules on a solid surface and firing a laser at it. Larger complexes affect how light travels across the surface of the plate. Like affinity chromatography, you can line the surface of a capillary with one of your biomolecule partners. As you run a test partner through the capillary, it becomes bound and elutes later. Microfluidic technologies have been directed towards quantifying binding, and many such setups exist. There are additional binding-based assays that are used to tease out additional information about your sample. In footprinting, you're not only asking whether a protein binds to a DNA, but also where does it bind to the DNA. You incubate the protein and DNA together and then treat it with chemical mutagens or nuclease. In the region where the protein binds, the DNA will be protected from modification. You later run a gel on the DNA and you can deduce which positions of the sequence were protected. Photo crosslinking involves mod modifying one of the partner biomolecules with a cross-linkable moiety such as benzophenone. Upon irradiation with UV light, that moiety will react with nearby nucleophiles on the partner biomolecule. You can then determine chemically which residues on the partner became crosslinked, and thus are near the labeling site in the complex. Chip-on-chip -chip involves immunoprecipitation of a DNA binding protein in crude lysates of cells. Pulling down the protein also pulls down any DNAs that it binds, so you can detect which sequences were pulled down using microarrays or deep C 